I find painting in watercolour is never easy and I have lots of failed paintings. The cupboard over there is full of them. Failing though doesn't stop me from loving this medium. In this video I want to show you a few of the mistakes I made when I painted this woodpecker and you'll see how I tried to correct them. I wasn't going to show you this woodpecker painting. I painted it, I filmed myself painting it, and I made a few mistakes. So I thought, okay, I'll ditch this one and I'll paint another one and I'll show you the second one. But then someone came to put up our new blinds in here and this painting was sitting on the desk. When he'd finished putting the blinds up, I came back in and he said to me that he'd been admiring the painting. He thought it was beautiful and he asked me if he could take a photo of it to show his wife. So then I felt a bit better about the painting and I decided that there was a lesson here. I thought to myself, okay, Louise, show everybody the mistakes you made and how you tried to correct them and then they might be able to avoid those mistakes themselves. Or if they do make them, maybe there's a way they could fix them. Making mistakes is how you learn, so why wouldn't I show you? I also wanted you to know that not every painting I do goes according to my plans. I have lots of failures, but I try to learn from them and I try not to let them get to me. The full length version of this tutorial will be available on my Patreon site when I get it done. If you join us there, you'll be able to download the line drawing, some progress photos of my painting and a copy of my finished painting. I walk you step by step through the whole painting, including my mistakes, so that you can paint along with me. The reference photo I used was taken by Vincent van Zeling and I downloaded it from Unsplash. I used Arsh cold press watercolour paper and Winsor & Newton professional watercolour paints. The four colours I used were French ultramarine, burnt sienna, scarlet lake and transparent yellow. Before I started I mixed some black for myself from French ultramarine and burnt sienna. I like to squirt out fresh paint when I do that so that I can keep the water out of the paint while I mix it. I use a slightly damp brush, it doesn't have a lot of water on it, just a tiny bit. And I mix the sticky pigment together to make a really dark black. I spread it over the palette so that it mixes well. This is my black palette, I've been using it a lot lately, I seem to have been painting a lot of things with black on them. This is an old brush as well, I don't like to use my good sable brushes to mix paint like this. Here I'm just squishing the paint out of the bristles before I rinse it. The wings have some white markings on them, so I started by painting some masking fluid over those. I'm using Daniel Smith's masking fluid and I've got an old liner brush. After I did that I thought I'd wash in the body of the bird. So here I'm painting some water on. I'll work wet on wet so that all the colours blend together and give me soft edges. I make sure the water is spread out evenly and there's no puddles lying on top. Here I've got some burnt sienna, I'm painting that onto the wet paper. Now I've taken the paint out of my brush, it's just slightly damp with water. I'm pushing the paint up that's on the paper. I don't need any more colour, I can use what's there. And now I've got a bit of Scarlet Lake. Then I painted some Scarlet Lake on the front here. The paper's still quite wet, you can see the sheen on the surface. And this is transparent yellow. I've got a lost edge on the front of the bird where the white feathers are. I won't be putting any paint there. And here I've taken the paint out of my brush again and I'm pushing that paint up into the area where the white feathers are. And that creates a softer edge there. 
and I keep my paint away from the edge of the water. The water lines up here. I need a bit of a buffer. If the paint creeps all the way to the edge of that water line, I'll get a hard line across there where I don't want it. So I stop it before it gets to that edge. And now I have some black. This is the black that I mixed from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. While it's wet, I'm going to run the black down the front of the wing. There's a shadow there that I'd like to include. It helps to lift the wing off the body. So while it's wet, I might as well put it on. I do come back later and deepen this shadow though. Then it was time to paint on the black markings that are on the front of the bird. So I rolled my brush in the sticky black pigment. And I painted them on. I had to paint them on fairly quickly because I didn't want to hold my brush in one position. If I did that on the wet paper, I'd leave a little circular mark where I lifted the brush. So I had to paint them on carefully and quickly. I varied the shape of some of them. Some of them are a bit fatter than others. Some of them are longer than others. I wet the head with some water and then I got some grey and I mixed the grey from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna again and I painted that onto the wet paper. I mixed some brown. The brown was made from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine as well but it has more Burnt Sienna in it. So I vary the ratio of the pigment. Then I got my little liner brush and I used some of the black paint to paint some little wispy feathers around the beak. This is a fine goat hair mop brush that I bought years ago that I've never used. I bought it at a fine art supply store in Sydney. I thought it would come in handy to paint in the black wispy feathers on the neck and also the red feathers on the head. I loaded the brush up with black paint and I started to paint on that black patch of feathers on the wet paper. That was my first mistake. I should have painted this on dry paper. I don't know why I wet it. As soon as I started painting on the wet paper I realised I should have been painting on dry. Anyway, I dried it off with the hairdryer then and then I came back over the top with another layer of the black paint using the same brush. I've separated the bristles to give me that rough textured look. This time I felt I had painted it on too dry, so I'd gone from one extreme to the other. It was too wet to begin with and now I felt I was too dry with the paint. Anyway, I left it like that and I thought I'll paint in the red feathers and I'll come back to the black area later. I washed the black out of my brush and then I picked up some of the Scarlet Lake with it. I wanted good heavy pigment here. I didn't want to have to come back and do it a second time. So that's why I pushed the brush into the pigment that was on the palette rather than create a puddle for myself. I had a bit too much water in the brush so I squeezed a bit out and then I kept going. Then I went back with a brush that I was familiar with, my little Da Vinci Maestro, and I added a few more little flicks. And then I used a damp brush to soften that edge at the front. I didn't want a hard line there. I had to come back and do that again. While that was wet, I painted a bit of burnt sienna along the bottom edge of it, on the white feathers. And here's my second mistake. I came back over the top of the black with some more black paint using my little zero brush. This brush is too small. I should have used a larger brush to paint over the top. I waited until that area of black feathers had dried and then I used my number seven round brush, damp with water, to smooth out the busy brush strokes that I'd made with the zero brush. 
and that improved that area slightly, but I still wasn't happy with it. I painted in the eye and a bit of detail around the eye, and then I wet the back of the neck here so that I can run some black down the back. This is the black paint. I wanted it to bleed back onto the neck and give me those soft edges there. I put a few little black marks on the wet paper there as well. I had painted some masking fluid into that black area before I started. Now I'm taking the masking fluid off to reveal those little white feathers that are there. I painted in the wing feathers on dry paper with the black. I painted them all in at once. Straight over the top of the masking fluid. Then when it was dry, I got my rubber cement pickup tool and I took the masking fluid off. This is some more black that I've got and I'm starting to define some of the feathers at a bit of detail. I didn't do too much to the wing. All I did was layer over the top in a few areas with the darker paint and I left that lighter wash showing. And that was all done on dry paper. With the branch, I wet it with water and then I painted some grey onto it while it was wet and I left the white of the paper showing. And then I made my third mistake. I painted some yellow and some red, the two colours I used on the bird, onto the branch. Just to repeat the colours, I thought that it would look interesting. But after it had dried, I'd realised that I had overdone it. Here I'm still working on it while it was wet. It wasn't too bad at this stage, but as I said, after it had dried, I didn't like it. So what I did then was I re-wet it with water and then I started to paint some of the black mixture over the top to tone it down a bit. And while it was wet, I put a bit more black down on the lower section. And it wasn't too bad after I did that. I dried all that off and then I came back with my eradicator brush and I started to create some highlights. When I first started painting I was determined not to fuss with the branch but in the end that's all I did, I fussed with it. This little brush is wet and the paper's dry and it gently loosens the pigment and then I can take it off with a paper towel. I've got a small and a medium one of these and I use them all the time. I've put a link in the description of this video if you'd like to get one yourself. I use these little brushes on just about all of my paintings. After I finished with the eradicator brush I did some more fussing on the branch. I used my number two brush and some of the grey paint and I started to define a few areas. I wanted to take away a few of those soft edges that the eradicator brush had made just to vary it slightly so I painted around some of those highlights. When I finished the branch I painted in the foot then I wet the bird with some water and I darkened that shadow along the front where the wing is just using the black. And I put a bit of grey over here on this side to try and make it look like it's more curved. That was on wet paper there. Then I went back to the black feathers on the neck area and I tried to improve them further. I used my eradicator brush again to take a bit of paint off and to tidy up around the edges. There is the little woodpecker finished. It didn't work out exactly as I had planned it, but it's not too bad and I can live with it. I'll do better next time. So don't be too hard on yourself if things don't go according to your plans when you're painting. 
It happens to me all the time. And if I hadn't told you that I'd had those problems on this painting, you probably wouldn't have noticed anyway. Thanks for watching. You know I always appreciate a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to my channel if you don't already and I'll see you next week. I've got, should I say I have, I have lots of failed paintings. The cupboard over there, there. When he'd finished putting the blinds up I came back in and he said to me that he'd been 